What is up guys? Andrew here and welcome to Comic Booker. All things comics from a creator. I've been a huge fan of comics creator James Harron ever since I encountered his work on BPRD. Specifically, the three-issue series The Long Death, which completely blew me away with its intense kinetic fight scenes and beautiful storytelling. Plus, it had a zombie moose versus a were-leopard. You can't really beat that. Anyway, since then, Harren has worked on a whole bunch of beautiful comics, from Marvel's Thor, DC Comics' Deceased, Giant Generator 7 to Eternity, and his creator-owned Rumble with writer John Arcudi. This year though, Harren has completely outdone himself with a new creator-owned series from Image Comics. Let's dig into it. Here are my three thoughts on Ultra Mega. Number one, it goes really big. With a first issue that clocks in at 66 pages, Ultra Mega starts out by quickly establishing a world where a cosmic virus randomly turns people into destructive kaiju. A mysterious force gifts three humans with the power to turn into gigantic humanoid protectors that can fight these monsters. They're called the Ultra Mega, and the first issue of the book goes through their entire career in a bloody and brutal manner. I don't want to spoil anything here, but the story is completely bonkers in a really good way. It starts with a simple premise that it quickly undermines bringing in elements of body horror, family drama, and societal commentary. It shifts back and forth from building-sized action to normal-sized drama, playing the two scales off of each other. If you're familiar with the tokusatsu genre of Japanese live-action film, you'll probably recognize Ultraman in the DNA of this comic, with bits of Godzilla and Super Sentai thrown in, maybe uh, a smidge of Pacific Rim. Ultra Mega takes all those familiar tropes and runs off with them into dark and dangerous places that feel wholly new for the genre. And while you might have seen giant superheroes fighting giant monsters before, there are likely more than a few visuals in this comic that you have never seen before. Which brings me to my second thought. Number two, this art is ridiculous. I may be biased here because I like him so much, but I don't think there's any artist quite like James Harron working in comics today. He's got a blend of multiple styles that always feel unique and startling, even when paired with familiar properties like Hellboy or Thor. There's a lot of Jack Kirby in there and a ton of manga, some Mike Mignola, and who knows what else. I especially love seeing the action scenes with figures that stretch and squeeze with every movement and speed lines that almost rock you back and forth with every panel. He even does a thing where a thick contour line turns into a jagged scribble, simulating a motion blur. And the inking is both chunky and precise, outlining shapes clearly but breaking them up with these beautiful splatters and textures. Harren is paired with his longtime colorist Dave Stewart for this comic. And Dave Stewart on his own is like probably one of the best colorists in the mainstream comics industry right now. Together with letterer Russ Wooton, they've all put together this comic book that is nothing short of a feast for the eyes. It's kinetic and heavy and exciting and you never really think of the book's length because the story sucks you in and keeps you there until the breathless conclusion. And when you get there, you'll want to start again because of my third thought. Number three, it's like an artist's sketchbook. Let me explain. A lot of comics out there often feel like an execution of plot with visuals that serve a functional purpose um, that all seems to stem from the story first. And it's all well and good, but I think there is a rare comic that feels like the opposite. One where it feels like it began as a series of visuals that slowly morphed into a coherent story. Because of that, this book feels like an artist's sketchbook come to life. And that's the kind of book I just love to read over and over. Just look at these crazy shots and these beautiful designs and oh my god, I'm just gushing now. But you know, it's, it's such a cool book. Issue 2 just came out and it's even better than Issue 1. So if you're an artist who wants to feed your brain with delicious drawings, do not miss out on this series. Anyway, that's enough gushing for today guys. What are you reading right now? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, a thumbs up or a subscribe would be super appreciated. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.